Alan Guth, uh, you know, it talks about the, the inflationary period in the universe and has to posit that there's some way in which the universe can be uh, forced to accelerate in its expansion faster and faster. Exponentially. Precisely. And perhaps with some, you know, fundamental, uh, you know, energy, you know, that, that's there, that, that's causing this to occur. Um, we don't have any way right now of observing that in action, but we just happen to have discovered that our current universe seems to be accelerating and probably um, with some energy spread throughout space that's causing that acceleration. And we don't know if it's the same thing as what was causing that early inflation, but at least it's an analogy and at least it gives us an example of an existence proof that such things can happen. So it allows us to at least look at what kinds of physics can lead to an acceleration. They both would have a you know, energy that's really spread through all of the vacuum. All of empty space has this energy associated with it back then and now. And that energy um, can make the universe expand faster. And of course, the more uh, space you have, the more of that energy you have, because it, it goes with the extra space. And so both, in both situations, you're usually using that same picture um, to, to describe things. Um, they have some differences in that you know, one of them has to turn off, uh, you know, because we know that the that the, well, we believe that the very earliest picture had a very quick um, you know, exponential. Well, the exponential is a, seems to me a huge difference. That's true. On the other hand, if you look at the very earliest stages of an exponential, um, it could look like what we see now. So in that sense, we don't know whether that's a fundamental difference between the two epochs. I'd like to step back and say that you know, what, what we found uh, in, in, our trying to under, in our attempts to understand cosmology has been that a amazingly simple set of principles, uh, an amazing simple story, has ended up explaining huge amounts. All of which are consistent with the universe having a beginning. Exactly. And, but, but begin to enrich the understanding of what that beginning is. That's right, these are all, these are all um, just little additions to the story. Of course, there are different ways of interpreting the Big Bang. There's also a tendency for us to hear the word Big Bang. I think it means an explosion. Um, and, and that's also, I think, a, a, a sort of misunderstanding of what, we, of what the theory is supposed to mean. But nonetheless, the basic idea that we came, uh, that the universe we see around us apparently began in a much hotter, denser state and then all distances between, you know, all points became, you know, much larger, does seem to be consistent with everything we see around us. In some sense, you, you may always find yourself pushing against a philosophical question, which is, okay, suppose we explain the whole thing um, at the very end by saying, oh, all we needed to do was to write down this one physics equation that explains how physics works, and then suddenly everything else happens. Still, you're in, in this business of, of saying, all right, but then the beginning is the physics equation. And, uh, and how satisfying that feels to you is just the probably personal taste. <laughs>